In 2015, SpaceX started development of a new satellite internet service called Starlink, unlike any existing one. Rather than a few satellites parked in a far geostationary orbit, SpaceX wanted thousands of them orbiting very close to Earth. This approach changes everything, enabling high bandwidth, low latency connection anywhere on Earth. But creating something of this complexity isn't easy. Getting regulatory approval, developing a new satellite, communication infrastructure, building and launching thousands of them into orbit. You might expect this endeavor to span decades, but not for SpaceX. Six years on, Starlink has over a thousand in orbit, and their beta service is already providing internet for over 10,000 people and climbing quickly. These timescales are astonishing, especially in an industry where progress is difficult and the pace of development is notoriously slow. SpaceX is unlike any other rocket companies that came before it. For them, speed is everything, and the philosophy of the company is built around it. But why is speed so important, and what allows them to move so quickly where others cannot? It's perhaps not that surprising that a small private company moves much faster than the likes of NASA, with less bureaucracy and stakeholders to manage. But there's a bit more to it than that. After all, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin was founded two years prior to SpaceX and still hasn't reached orbit. Meanwhile, in 2020, SpaceX has launched over double the payload as the rest of the world combined. While there's limited value in comparing rocket companies like this, it does illustrate how quickly SpaceX has moved to reach where it is today, and they aren't slowing down. SpaceX are renowned for their extremely ambitious goal of putting humans on Mars by 2026. This very difficult yet important goal is a key driving force throughout the company, and many employees cite it as the primary reason they invest so much into it. This is especially important during their intense development crunches, where it's not unusual to find employees, including the CEO, sleeping on a mattress under the desk. By declaring very aggressive deadlines to the public, they aim to remove the slack in the development process by forcing elimination of non-essential activities. These seemingly implausible development timelines are jokingly referred to as Elon time. And while they're often late to their deadlines, as we saw in the Starlink example, when it works, the results can be astonishing. There's no direct window into how SpaceX operates, but we can piece it together from interviews of various SpaceX personnel. Their focus on speed looks a lot more like a small software startup. As Garrett Reisman, a NASA astronaut who went on to work at SpaceX described, SpaceX really brought that whole Silicon Valley entrepreneurial culture to an industry that had a very different corporate culture. That was revolutionary. There's lots of things that were very different in how SpaceX went about their work compared to NASA and other traditional aerospace companies. What was particularly striking was the quick speed in which decisions were made. They were getting things done in months, which would have taken NASA years. The ability to make fast decisions and reach agreements quickly is key to SpaceX's agility. If each big decision has to be approved by top management, then they quickly become the bottleneck. Elon Musk may be the chief engineer of SpaceX, but he places a big emphasis on distributing authority. What I actually used to tell the team, everyone is chief engineer. This is extremely important and that everyone must understand how, broadly speaking, all the systems in the vehicle work. By understanding and sharing responsibility of adjacent systems and technologies, all employees have the knowledge and authority to challenge all constraints given by other teams without escalation. SpaceX is structured like most companies. Individuals report to managers, report to directors, report to VPs. What makes SpaceX a little unique is despite the reporting structure, decision-making is astonishingly flat. Technical decisions rarely go up through the management chain. It usually happens through work groups that are assembled ad hoc to tackle a particular problem. And yes, the CEO participates in many of these work groups. System and design handoffs also create significant delays through back and forth. Removing this enables a much simpler and faster design process. But how does it actually work without creating internal chaos? There is no defined systems integrator role at SpaceX. Everyone is responsible for carrying their system all the way through. They resisted the idea of handoffs because they saw how it caused NASA to push reliability and complexity way higher than needed. 
What this enables is surprisingly fast results, even for employees. As a story from Falcon 9's development shows, it took Elon six weeks to go from, okay, let's land on a boat, to actually having a boat. The software VP guy didn't think it was a 2014 problem, definitely 2015. People who'd been there longer knew that Elon would be able to get a boat quick, definitely a 2014 problem. It's mid-September, Elon has a boat. He wants to launch in October and land on a boat. Starship's early ITS and BFR designs were intended to improve on Falcom's aluminium body by using carbon fibre to increase its strength to weight ratio. However, designing and manufacturing carbon fibre is difficult and the early development was progressing too slow for SpaceX. Starship switched to a surprising material, stainless steel. Unlike carbon fibre, it's even heavier than the aluminium it was supposed to replace. On a rocket where every kilogram matters, it seemed a puzzling choice. However, as Elon Musk explained, if a design is taking too long, the design is wrong. Therefore, the design must be modified to accelerate progress. The switch to steel was because advanced carbon fibre was taking too long. It took me quite a bit of effort to convince the team to go in this direction. Steel actually has a number of surprising performance benefits, but the initial reason for switching was speed. The chromium nickel alloy they'll use is very similar to the 301 stainless used in structural and even tableware applications. Its widespread industrial use makes it cheap and easy to source. It can be cut, bent and welded using existing tools and processes. This helps accelerate development by making rapid prototyping easier and enables fast scaling of its manufacturing processes to achieve large volume production. While SpaceX's cultural and structural focus on speed is impressive, the development process also needs to keep pace. It may well actually be the key to their success. SpaceX uses a type of agile development for both hardware and software, an approach Elon Musk describes as very rapid iteration, and it differs greatly from the traditional gated waterfall used by the incumbents. Rather than spend a long time trying to design the perfect rocket, put it through simulations, and finally build it and test it, SpaceX compresses this process into a much shorter time frame, repeating it over and over again. They start with only a rough guide of the potential final design, and build a minimalist version as quickly as possible. These prototypes aren't intended to test the viability of the final rocket, but to quickly gain insight on the program's riskiest technical assumptions. Rather than developing every system simultaneously and delaying completion of the first prototypes, low criticality and easier to develop components are ignored and will be designed and integrated around major systems later. As such, few elements of the early prototypes remotely reflect the final design. Temporary placeholder parts simply need to be good enough to support the test. This is why a prototype like Starhopper bears little resemblance to the final vehicle, but still proves valuable in terms of early learning and data. Building progressively more realistic prototypes means testing is less about validating the existing design, but experimenting to discover the best approach, while the design is still easy to change. This may seem like a crazy way to develop rockets, but it gives the flexibility to react to real-world challenges that aren't identified at the drawing and simulation stage. Simulations are a valuable tool, but our models can only be so accurate and often don't capture many practical difficulties. Designing rockets requires the interfacing of many disciplines. The perfect design can't be drawn up on the whiteboard. Even after years of planning, no matter how talented the team, there's just way too much complexity to manage, and many problems will go unnoticed until it's too late. Rapid prototyping forces these problems to the surface. Major problems are solved early, and fast iteration ensures the evolving design quickly converges towards the final version. Iterative development is already common in the software industry, but it's increasingly being used in hardware development. Despite the cost of material and tooling associated with continuous prototyping, in such a capital-intensive industry, the traditional get-it-right-first-time may seem the most effective approach but its heavy emphasis on upfront design has many hidden costs, from much slower development times to expensive late-stage design changes. As such, the costs for high-complexity development projects are notorious for skyrocketing. The advantages of very rapid iteration is something Elon Musk summarized as, building many rockets allows for successive approximation, 
progress in any given technology is simply the number of iterations times the progress between iterations. And the more iterations you have, the better you get at it, and the faster each iteration gets. This can be seen in the shrinking development times between SN8 and SN11. And the benefits of iteration are especially true for Starship, where you need to simultaneously design a manufacturing system that can scale. Iterative development requires significant use of rapid prototyping, and this is an area where SpaceX excels. SpaceX cares a lot more about speed and rapid prototyping than a checklist of careful lessons learned in the past. That's not the way they operate. They're like, get it done yesterday. Anything that helps you prototype faster is going to be supported by management. Starhopper was built in a field with the help of a water tower company. It seems strange that the first prototype for such an advanced rocket was essentially a flying water tower. After all, the final rocket was never intended to be assembled this way. However, it was ideal for learning about large sheet steel construction, and its quick assembly enabled early testing of other key design elements, such as the integration of the new Raptor engine. Why wait to construct a new development facility before testing the prototype? Construct the weather-sensitive elements under a tent and build the rest outside. This seems like a crazy departure from standard aerospace practices, but developing in a field Field allowed them to start testing months earlier, all whilst the Boca Chica facility was simultaneously constructed around the active prototype development. Hardware reuse is common in rocket development. NASA prefers reusing flight-proven hardware, even if it's decades old. SpaceX also likes to reuse hardware, but their reasons for doing so are quite different. The traditional approach is to reduce risk and cost by reusing old technologies such as chips and engines. For SpaceX, however, they don't intend to reuse old hardware on new vehicles, but utilize them to prototype faster. It's better to test prototypes using some temporary suboptimal components rather than delay months waiting for all the final optimized solutions. Starship has utilized Tesla motors and battery packs to power control surfaces. These components won't be used on the final version, but are easy to source and install so that more critical design elements can be tested sooner. As long as it doesn't hold you back, you can reuse designs that you've done before. Let's say you're laying out a circuit board. If you have something you know helps with speed or reducing interference, then you can just copy and paste the same layout. There's no need to redesign it unless you really, really have to. So a lot of it is recycling in terms of rapid prototyping. Trying to develop faster isn't without problems. SpaceX's speed has led to numerous mistakes. Starhopper blowing over in the wind, stands collapsing in the high bay. These aren't errors usually associated with a rocket company, where problems like these are usually carefully calculated well in advance. There is no question that these errors have cost development time, but for SpaceX, it's all part of the process. Even with delays due to mistakes, overall development time still ends up being much faster. As you may have come to expect, Starship has the extremely ambitious target of reaching orbit in July and its first Starlink deployment in September. Whether or not this turns out to be another example of Elon time, thanks to SpaceX's relentless focus on speed, we may reasonably expect that it will still arrive in the blink of an eye by space industry standards. But while speed may be a core part of SpaceX, it's not the only quality that sets them apart. There are many other key areas that are very important to them. From production scale to performance and cost, SpaceX could be considered a leader in all these regards. So what is it that allows them to succeed on so many fronts? How are they able to continuously reduce the cost of rocketry? How do they push the performance and capabilities of their rockets so much? Let's find out.